So toes out. Imagine you're being held up, lifted from your crown, chin in, remember. So you have this downward feeling in the rest of your body, but the skeleton is lifting up. Interlock your fingers, gently press your palms together and rotate. So remember, go at your own pace. And while you're doing this, it's quite easy to like start to tense up with the muscles here, your trapezius muscles. And I'm going to over exaggerate and your shoulders start to lift up. So you want to be conscious of having this downward feeling in the shoulders. You don't want your elbows in too close either. That will kind of lift your shoulders. And then let's chain. Let's go the other way. Again, keeping those shoulders relaxed. and change up and down so you make a wave with your arms so again as you're doing this try not to let the shoulders lift up or let your elbows kind of move out too much like so you want a smooth controlled movement working around the wrists keeping the shoulders down and you can just start to move your hips side to side feel your weight into each foot as you just move your hips side to side Keeping those shoulders relaxed. And change. So this next exercise is a few variations, but this is the way how I generally like to do it. So we're going to circle round, and as you bring your hands in, sink into your hips, into your quad, really feel your root. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as we progress into the Wu style. And then from here, push through your legs to bring your arms back around. So we sink, really feel your root. If you bend too much, you're not going to feel the root in the floor. So you sink, feel the root, then push with your leg. So you sink, feel your root. And also if you kind of sway, like there's nothing wrong with this, but you're not connecting to the ground yet. So we're trying to sink, feel the root, then push with your legs. And as you push with your legs, feel for that foot to hand connection. So what we're trying to do is build a line of force or open this channel, this meridian, from your feet going up out to your fingertips. So you're trying to chain your joints. So you go from your feet, ankle, knees, hip, up the spine, shoulder, elbow, and out of the hands and fingers. So we sink, we go feet, knee, hip, spine, lifting up, shoulder, elbow, hands or fingers. So that's the feeling what you're trying to create. And then change, we go the other way. So we try to do the same. So as your hands come up, you sink, Push with your legs as your hands come up, sink. Push with your legs as your hands come up, we sink. Push. So remember, as you sink, feel your root. So you don't want to bend too much. And then push, feel for that foot to hand connection, sink. Working through your feet, your knees, your hips, up the spine, shoulder, elbow, hands. So that's what you're trying to feel for. And again, if you kind of sway, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're not going to connect the root and build that connection through the body so in your own time and change so next fingertips onto your shoulders or chest area circle round so when you bring the elbows down, sink into the hips again. Yeah, so we want that same sinking and you want your knees to slightly move out so you have that nice round shape. So you're always working the body method, the Shen Fa, in, even in the warm-up exercises. And as we do this, we want to start to move the chest and back. So we open the chest, close the chest, close the back, open the back. So when we lift up, we want the chest to open. Then when we close or bring the elbows down, we want to close the chest. So see I open, close. I open the chest, I close the chest. So 
You're not just moving your shoulders, you're trying to engage your chest and back into this movement. And then change, other way. So now we reverse the movement of the chest and back. So as you lift the elbows up, the chest opens. And then as the elbows come down, the chest closes. And again, you want to sink, make that shape in the legs. change so now we shift across we circle the elbow round we shift across we circle the elbow round so here we want to shift but feel your weight when you go into it's like you're using your quad a little bit and that way you can turn your waist and then you fold or collapse your chest here yeah that's what we're trying to do so can you see my weight is still here and as just as I'm about to go across I collapse the chest this way then I and use the other side to engage my chest and my hip into this exercise as well. So it's not just shifting across and using your shoulders like this. We want to engage the body and to engage. Can you see here I'm closing the chest slightly? So continuously. and change so this time to the outside so i want to can you see i shift again i need to use my quad my hip so i open across the body this will help open my shoulder a bit more then i shift and can you see i sink and open i sink slightly or use the quad and i open so i don't want to do this can you see when i open turn my body or open my shoulder i shift across i want to open my weight still here then i go across so this will all help when we do the form regardless of style whether it's chen style wu style take your time <clears throat> relax one arm across so now we just make a bigger circle rotating so nothing fancy here here we're just trying to work the shoulders just rotate you can use the rotation of your body to help with this movement a little bit if you want to you can sink and then you lift your leg you sink you straighten through the body so you're always building this kind of connection working the whole body together and change other way and change other arm same again <clears throat> Remember, go at your own pace and change of a way. And change arms up and down. So just in your own time. So we'll do this a few times and then I'll break this exercise down. Uh. 
and relax. Okay, so let's break this exercise down. So it's quite, this exercise um, seems simple and it is simple, but there's, it has, if you're doing it correctly with the right intent and trying to put the correct kind of technique into it will help your overall Tai Chi. So one, one of the ways in Tai Chi we try to relax is to release, empty, sink your chi, or another way to say to let your, uh, sink your chi down or release the tension from the body. Yeah, then the other key thing in Tai Chi is we always want to root to the ground. So we can root two ways. One is like physically, duh, 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 duh. yeah, and this will only take you so far. And then the other one is internally rooting. And you overall, you try to combine the two together where you're emptying your body. So through your structure, you root, connect to the ground. Yeah, that's the other thing. Then here, when you're emptying, also when we do Fa Jing in Tai Chi, it's not like we're moving everything out. We've got a something has to come down you're kind of releasing emptying as well otherwise it's just like Whoa! this kind of more tense type of way of hitting yeah so through this exercise what we want to do is we lift the arms you can lift them so high or even higher and you drop them down and you want this springy elastic feeling in your arms first so just have that intent this can be done very softly or you can have it with a bit more force so you listen to your body but you want this springy can you see elastic feeling in your body that's what you're trying to create yeah and then from there we want to add on this sinking can you see as I drop I want to sink <laughs> yeah and can you see my knees go out so I have that good shape so I don't want to bend too much because I want to feel my root <laughs> So you want that springy elastic feeling in your arms. As you sink, you want to feel your root to the floor, your connection to the ground. And now we want to feel like we're emptying or releasing the tension in your body. You feel that go down into the floor and this should make your feeling of the root, your connection to the ground stronger. I remember we, when we drop, we want to imagine we're being lifted from your crown. Yeah, so you imagine you're being lifted from your crown. So your body doesn't go forward, your head doesn't move. So otherwise, if, you, if that's happening, you're putting too much force in or you're bending too much. You're not trying to do the right thing in the movement. And also, sometimes I see a lot of people at the bottom, they put an extra shake here and then they carry on you're going to break that rhythm that connection to the floor so it's just up down up down and relax okay so the next one cup your hip or waist we go over as far as you feel comfortable and back down again So just as far as you feel comfortable and at your own pace. And change of a side, same again. Remember, take your time, just go as far as you feel comfortable. And change. Okay, elbows up. So you soften your knees or sink into your hips. So when we elbow back twice, you straighten your legs and then we sink again then when you elbow you straighten your legs then we sink again and then when you open straighten your legs sink open so you're always developing this boom boom and this kind of feeling of connecting the 
body together. Yeah, so again, we'll work on the four first and then we'll do the second four after and combine it all together. So we go one, two, three, four. You can go at your own pace if you wish or together. One, two, three, four. Again, we go one, two, three, four. And so now as we're doing one, two, three, four, with each, we're trying to also open the chest a little bit. This is gonna help open your shoulders a little bit more. And again, we're constantly working that opening, closing of the chest and the back together. So this is really important in Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan, all styles of Tai Chi. So apart from the, the legs, we've got the chest. So we open, sink, we open, we open, we open. Yeah, so it's quite easy with this exercise to kind of just kind of go, yeah, so I, I do that. So I sometimes have to, or a lot of times I remind myself to try and ingrain lots of this body method in. So ready, we'll go again for one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. One more time and we'll add on the other four. One, two, three, four. Four, now five, six, both arms move back. We don't worry about the legs or the chest. You can see five, six. So I want extension in the shoulders. Then I change, seven, eight. So again, I'll do five and six. So we go five, six, seven, eight. So ready, we'll add it all together. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we use the legs on the first four. One, two, three, four. Then we straighten. Five, six, seven, eight. And back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And change. Elbows up. Twice to both sides. <clears throat> so remember we're turning the hips a little. You see I'm using the hips and also the waist as well. Yeah, so the hips and the waist. And the first one's like a test. Second one, I can go a little bit further. And you just go as far as you feel comfortable and at your own pace. change relax your arms turn so we'll do this exercise first and then we'll break this down as well so just go through it so remember you let your hands at first just land wherever they want so it all depends on the length of your arm so some people will say you can Tap your abdomen at the front, your chest, either your arm, shoulder area, and chest at the top as well. On the back, generally, most people agree you either tap your glutes, yeah, or the, your kidney area, yeah. But again, just let your hands land wherever they go, yeah. And don't be afraid to make a sound. And then now we can go towards the shoulders or over the shoulders. So we want to hit this muscle here, chen fi, or tap this muscle. You can still go below your shoulders, that's fine. And 
and relax back down and relax so we'll break this exercise down so again this is another important exercise in the warm-up exercises to help more with like the internal practice of tai chi and like the shen fa the feeling of tai chi yeah like you're trying to create develop yeah so you imagine your body or your hips to be like um, those Japanese drums that you spin and it's got a little bass and then string with a bean and it hits so your hips are that yeah so can you see I have this slight movement in the hips I can shift my weight if I want to or kind of just rotate is not important yeah with that specific detail and then your body is like the base of the drum your arms are the string and your hands are the bean so you want your arms to be really relaxed so can you see I'm, my hips are turning and so is my torso a little bit yeah so this will help with the the channel at the front as well yeah so that's mechanically what you're trying to do but internally what we're trying to do is we want to relax our hands let them become really heavy so what we try to do we try to internally open your shoulder joint so what we mean by that is creating space in and around the shoulder joint so you imagine this is the arm bone the collar bone yeah so this is the the joint yeah so between the joint you imagine space being created then around the joint you have all the the connective tissues the fascia the tendons the ligaments the muscles and you imagine those releasing opening as well and this is like the internal way of opening your joints for the energy to go through so we're not merely just kind of turning and slapping we want to focus on developing that opening feeling in the shoulders so this is like how we try to relax in Tai Chi we try to create a, a sung internal sung So that when you do this, that's your focus. So you've got the hips, the body rotating, turning. You relax your arms. Really let your, relax your hands, let them become heavy. And we want to focus on opening your shoulder joint. So creating space in and around the shoulder joint. And then when we go above the shoulder, now we don't worry about trying to create space in the shoulder joint. So now the reason we're going over is we're just trying to release, tap here. So this is a place where you get lots of tension. So it's trying to help you relax, release. And in Tai Chi, we want everything to always kind of go down, not up. So this is why we tend to type to hit here because the muscles at the back and at the top of your shoulder kind of go like this naturally for most people so we're trying to do, 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 like counter balance that just in the practice so now we're not so concerned about going all uh, about opening the shoulders so now we just tap above again just relax your hands let them become heavy To relax so okay so this particular exercise and um, there's lots of variations of this exercise this is the way we do it yeah and this is and those are the reasons why we do it so some people do this and they don't even touch yeah so I'm doing a bad imitation of their version because I don't really practice it yeah and again it, it's more to help with the relaxation the release and they'll have their own reasons of doing that so this is the way we do it so the other way is not wrong this is not wrong, we just have to understand why we're doing it and the goal of it, yeah? So this time, palms onto your lower back, your kidney area, and we just circle around, just rotate. And change of the way. And 
change. Okay, so next, down. So again, you, you don't want your feet too close, so roughly about shoulder width, toes up. So you squat, sink a little bit, hands onto, traditionally onto your knees. You can place them onto your thighs if you wish. And we want to rotate round, but as we do this, remember, don't focus just on your knees. A lot of the movement is from your ankle. So if you just focus on your knees, you're probably most likely gonna hurt your knee. So you wanna think of your ankle and your hip as well, yeah? And you try to make the movement soft and smooth. And also, can you see how my feet are rolling up? You try not to do that. You try to keep your feet flat on the floor. So my feet have always rolled and it's wrong. Um, and you try to limit that motion if that's happening to you as well. Then we go the other way. So again, we want to think of your ankles, your hips, not just your knees. And it's a soft, smooth movement. And change forwards. So traditionally, we hinge, we pulse from your hips. Can you see how I'm moving from my hips? And can you see how my spat, I'm not hunched over like this? My back is flat. I want my head in a neutral position. And as I'm hinging forwards, I imagine I'm being, my spine is being lengthened at the same time. It's like a soft pulsating movement. So you're not specifically pressing on your knees. The movement is from your hips. Although traditionally in some um, schools, we would press a little bit on the knees to slightly hyper extend but you do that when you're a lot younger not older and then from here we squat down just as far as you feel comfortable trying to keep your feet flat on the floor and you pulse again in the squat and if your knees are collapsing in push them out or that probably means you need to come a little bit higher and you do that movement And forwards, lengthen through your spine, pulsing, hinging from your hips, head in a neutral position. And then we squat down again. So for example, if you if you stay high, what you do is can you see I'm kind of staying high? I'm still pulsing but I'm pushing my hip back not so my feet lift up but I have to keep my feet flat but I have this pulsing movement if you find squatting a lot deeper difficult you try to push the hip back yeah and that will have the same effect on the ankles the knees the hips and the lower back as well and then forwards just drop your hands Drop your head, relax into the stretch. Okay, soften your knees, tuck your chin in, slowly come up. Okay, everybody okay? Yeah, good, okay. So when you're ready, next one, interlock your fingers, push out, palms facing out. So a lot of times I see people do it this way, you want your palms facing out. Back foot, one foot behind a little bit, and we stretch up and then down bringing the heel down up you lift the heel up down it's okay if you lift the other foot when you go back that's fine 
up and you can also keep it flat on the floor as well up and down so here you can either make a bigger movement can you see how i'm bringing my arms quite far forwards and then i'm lifting up or you can kind of do a softer more pulsating movement like so but either whichever one you pick you're trying to squeeze your shoulder blades or the muscles at the back to move your arms back and this is very good for your posture and, the, and for the muscles at the back so in your own time it's good for your shoulders as well and change other foot behind same again Remember, just go as far as you feel comfortable. And change, then from here. You throw your arms back and down. So I know a lot of you have done this before, but we'll break it down. So as you throw back, can you see how I'm, again, extending from my back, my upper back a little bit, and maybe even my lower back a little bit, especially when I engage the, the leg. So I don't just want to throw my arms like this. I want to, again, engage my upper back so my shoulders move back. So again, this will be good for your shoulders and your posture. It's gonna stop this kind of feeling. It's gonna help you sit, sit upright, yeah? So you try to engage the muscles in your upper back trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together a little bit or you retract them downwards slightly so that's the feeling and then the next thing just like the theme throughout all of tai chi you sink feel the pressure in the floor use that to extend feel the pressure use that to extend so you're not wasting the energy can you see you sometimes you kind of waste this momentum but in Tai Chi, you're always trying to be efficient and you're like grounding, using the floor, building this ground path all of the time. So you can carry on. And then when you're ready, you place one foot back. So again, can you see I'm extending? So I'm extending from my hip and my back just as much as you feel comfortable. Then in, can you see I build the pressure? Then I spring up in, I spring up and you find your own rhythm, your own pace. <clears throat> and when you feel comfortable you can extend further through your hips so it's not just lifting your knees so that's another common thing I see people do like this can you see you want to extend through your hip you can bend your knee but you extend through your hip and the idea is you're trying to get your feet to touch your hands, your hands to touch your feet. So obviously don't force it too much, but you just find your own rhythm with the movement. Okay, relax your arms, you shake out. So this particular movement, can you see, don't, don't kind of do your own thing. Try to start the movement from your shoulder. So you kind of relax as you all, all of your arm. This helps with more the Fali type movements of Tai Chi and to kind of help you relax the arm, the upper body as well. Because remember the shoulder is like the root of the arm the arm elbow is like the, the stem or the branch and the hand is like the leaf yeah so that's how we kind of look at the limbs in tai chi so it'll be the same with the legs so the hip is the root in the legs the leg knee part is like the stem the branch the foot is the leaf so the movement originates from the root so not just kind of relaxing your own kind of way. You want to 
originate the movement from the root. And relax, okay, feet close together. So down, so we squat and rotate. Trying to keep your feet flat on the floor, you can make a soft, small movement, or if you're, you can also be springy and squat deeper as well, but you find what works for you. So soft and smooth is always best. And then change of a way. And then forwards, just like before we're pulsing from the hip, keeping the back flat, lengthening through your back, head in a neutral position. And then you squat down, keeping your feet flat on the floor. So again, if you stay high, like I am, when I pulse, I want my hips to go back. Yeah, so I'm trying not to like force it if I find it difficult to squat deep. I want this kind of feeling with my hips when I pulse going back, my feet stay flat. And then forwards. Again, lengthening through your back, head in a neutral position. Then squat down, just as far as you feel comfortable or just like before. And forward, drop your hands, drop your head, relax into the stretch. Soften your knees, tuck your chin in, slowly come up. Okay, palms onto your lower back, one foot slightly behind and rotate your ankle. So remember, we want the foot slightly behind and that helps you make this movement easier in your hip so you can move your hip, your knee a little bit and your ankle. And change of a foot. So from here, just relax, shaking out side to side. So remember, if I step to my left, I want to kick with my right leg or flick with my right leg. And if I step to my right, it's the other way. And I slightly go across. Just want to have a feeling of like releasing, letting go through my limbs, through my arms and my legs. So next we'll go through the full stand stretch and low stand stretch. So I'm going to do each one at different levels. So I'm going to go from like, uh, from I guess easy to kind of more extreme in terms of range of motion. Yeah. So first 
whichever way, whether you step forwards, whether you step to the side, I'm going to stay high key. So I want my toe pointing forwards. So remember, it's a stretch. It's not like a stance from a form or from a particular style. We're trying to open up the hips and it's not yoga either, yeah? So it'll have specific elements of stretching related to Chinese health and Chinese Kung Fu culture, yeah? So this is another thing to remember when we do this. So my back leg is straight. My back foot, can you see, is in. So basically, I just don't want it out like this. I want to turn it in a little bit. For different people, depending on your um, flexibility in the ankle, it'd be more or less, yeah? So you vary. And I just want to shift here. And I'm just going to, I want to shift so my knee doesn't go over the toe. And I want, but I want my fat, my lower leg to be perpendicular to the floor as best. And I don't want to, I can rest my hands like on my thighs, my hips. Yeah, but I don't want to leave for now. I just want to kind of stay up, get comfortable in this position. I can turn my hips more or I can kind of have them kind of at an angle. So I find here in this position, you're able to open your hips a lot better. Yeah. Then from here, I'm just going to come up. I'm going to adjust my feet. Boom. And if I need to, I'll bring my foot in closer, wider. Boom. So I want the other foot to point forward. Back foot basically not pointing out in a little bit and I want the back foot flat on the fly shift forward but I don't want the knee to go over the toes like this in the stretch and I want or in this particular stretch I want my lower leg to be perpendicular to the floor body upright you can have your hands on your thigh hip or on your hips whatever works for you you can turn a little bit if that helps and up so this time I'm going to go a little bit deeper, so I'm going to go deeper. So can you see my back foot is still flat on the floor, my back leg is straight, it's not bent, it's straight, my other foot is out. This lower leg, again, is perpendicular, the best that I can get it. And if I have the flexibility, I try to get my thigh parallel to the floor. Again, I want my body upright, I can rest my hands like so, or like so. I prefer this, some people prefer this, yeah. And we're just trying to open through here. So we're trying to just open through here statically. And you can breathe, you can relax. Then we come up, adjust your feet. Again, you can go wider, narrower. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. So again, you can see, I don't want the knee bent, I want to have the leg straight, back foot flat, toes in. I sink into my hips, this leg perpendicular, five parallel if I can. Try to open, hold. And then up. So traditionally in Chinese arts, when we stretch, we pulse or hinge, like usually it's from the hips we hinge or other times like we kind of pulse in the stretch yeah so again because tai chi is obviously chinese it has this element in its stretching so but you could do this wrong and you can do this correctly yeah so we don't want to do it wrong so if you have a look so once i've got to my level i don't want to go with the knee you see this is my knee so it, I might, it might not feel any pain now but that I have been using this saying a lot recently, so if you've been coming to my classes, you know the years will see what the days don't. Yeah, so basically meaning I'm doing it wrong, I might not feel it today, tomorrow, next year, but in a couple of years, just because of the repetitive stain injury, I'm, I'm going to hurt my knee. Yeah, so we don't want to lead with the knee like this. You see, this is wrong. So you see lots of people kind of do this. What you want to do is you want to, once you're in your position, is from the hip. You see my hip is opening, sinking, pulsing, and it's opening my hips, and that's moving the knee, not this way around, yeah? So this is something you, if you're going to use um, the kind of pulsing method of stretching, which I generally do all the time and I don't hurt myself, um, you should be fine. You need to understand the difference, whether it's your knee or whether it's from your hips, yeah? So let's try, so ready? When you're ready, you can either hold statically, you can stay high, you can go low, and you just pulse in the stretch. <clears throat> and 
and then up, change to the other side. Same again, you find wherever you're at, wherever if you're high you still want and you want to pulse, you still use the hip. Yeah. Okay, so just because we probably did that a bit longer than normal, just relax your legs, shake out, and then we'll go through the next stretch. So next, um, I call just in the Tai Chi classes, bow stand stretch with the heel up. So we want to basically stretch your hip flexors, so these muscles here, because in Tai Chi you're always sinking, you're always using your hip flexors. Can you see here, boom, so you're going to probably get tight here and also when you get tight here these uh, those, the muscles attached to your spine start to pull on your spine and you get maybe lower back pain as well so we want to counterbalance this by lengthening them and strengthening them as well so this is why we do this so here I'm going to start high again I'm going to go from high to deeper range of motion to show everybody the variation so this width you can be closer wider you are find what works for you so again, can you see my toe is forward? My other toe roughly pretty much is forwards as well. Yeah, so I can have this leg straight or bent. It's up to me, I'm gonna to have to play around with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tilt my pelvis under. So I really took my tailbone under, boom. And I squeeze this glute on this side, the leg back. Squeeze both, it will help. And I should, if I get everything correct, feel a stretch at the front so I know I'm gonna have to kind of just kind of lengthen my leg a bit boom boom now I'm gonna bend squeeze my glute and now I've got the stretch coming up and down boom and if I need to I can squat a bit lower or come up and I will have the effect I want my hips to face forward so you don't always need to go really deep when we do this stretch you've got to listen to your body yeah so I'm gonna just stay here a bit longer and then come up go to the other side so you adjust a little bit so it's not about the range of motion in this stretch but you can go wider narrower tuck your pelvis under squeeze the glute that's not happening maybe you shift forwards or straighten the leg tuck squeeze the glute bend the knee maybe okay there for me i've got it now yeah so can you see how i'm kind of working through to try and get the stretch so i've got to squeeze the glute maintain that squeeze and you get the stretch. <clears throat> Remember to breathe. And relax. So with this, I kind of did it narrow. You can, so I'm going to go a little bit wider. So I'm a little bit wider to under, squeeze my glutes. I can still do it here, at this level here, yeah? So this is something that you have to play with, with the distance of the legs, but it's not about how far you go to get the stretch, yeah? So this time I'm gonna go for like a normal range of motion. So a bit like my bow stance, I'm gonna come down, yeah? So if you see this leg is perpendicular, this hip is forward, heel up. So I'm gonna make the heel up a bit more, and then I'm lengthening through here, boom. And here, again, I use that pulsing method just from the hips. I can hold statically, that's still good, or I can pulse a little bit in the hips. I want the body upright, you can rest the hands like so, but you're not leaning, or like so. And then come up, I'm going to go to the other side. Same again, so I'm gonna to go to my kind of normal level that I would normally do. So I want the lower leg perpendicular, hips forwards. Again, in this lengthened position, if I don't feel the stretch, I can tuck under, squeeze my glutes. So I can still do that. And then if I feel comfortable, I'm gonna to start to pulse from the hips. So it's not the knees, remember, it's from the hips. and up, relax. So that's generally the level that you're going to go to, but um, 
Also remember the warm up exercises are to build, prepare your body for what you're going to do and train your body just for good Chinese Kung Fu and Qigong practice. So we can also go deeper. So this time, if you have a look, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing this because some of you may want to, yeah? So you can do any of the other two. You can see I'm going deeper. I lengthen, my heels up, but I shift forwards. Now the knee is going over my toe, but the weight isn't in the knee. It's in my hips. Yep, so again, I can pulse or I can hold. Yep, so this is another way we sometimes do this stretch. So again, I'll go to the other side. So I'm gonna just go deeper. So I'm using my hips to shift across the knee, can go over the toes, but my weight isn't in the toes. Now it is, now it's in my hips. Boom. And then I can either hold or pulse. Boom. And relax. So that's the full stance with the heel up as well to open up your hips and to stretch the front. So just give your legs a shake and then we'll look at the low stance stretch. <clears throat> Just keep an eye on the time. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay, so from here, the low stand stretch. So we're gonna have to do it in phases again. So you find a comfortable distance. Don't, you don't have to be wide, toes out. So I want my hips to face forwards first. And I'm just going to shift across. And can you see my hips and body are forward? I just want to come into my hip crease. I close this angle. I'm keeping my weight there and I'm just going to pulse. Boom. <clears throat> so you're trying to, it's like a pulsing movement. Don't let the knee go over your toe. So you're trying to open up your hip crease or learn to sink into it. Then we go across, hips still forward. So this is just preparation to get into a low stance. But we can also use it to help warm, prepare the body, and it's good fundamental jibung gung training as well. We kind of fold. Can you see I've got my hand here, I want my hips, body forward. And now up. So now using the same method, slightly so, because I'm adding other things, I won't be fully be able to kind of use the hip crease in the same way. So I want to arc my hips. Boom. So I don't fully come up either or come across. I'm kind of pulsing in that leg, but my hips arc. So if my weight, so I'm going to my left, you see my hips rotate, so my body is able to move to the right. And then to the other side. So move, sink, And relax, okay. So I'm gonna call in Ralph to show you this movement. So I'm gonna kinda maybe get him to do it wrong and then try to correct you because quite a lot of the times I see lots of people kinda doing this, something. They're shifting to this leg and they're meant to be turning but they're kinda going like this. So sometimes it's difficult to try and explain but sometimes it's good if you see somebody, if you adopt any side face, yeah. Yes. So if you, you shift to one side, yeah, just go in and out like that. But so he, Ralph is doing it quite well already, but we're gonna get him to, can you see how, if you turn this way, boom. Can you see his weight stays here on this leg, he comes up a little bit and then he turns. You see it turn your body a bit more, boom, boom. You see, I'm gonna over exaggerate it a bit for him so you can see it stay, stay there. And can you see how he's facing this way? And then you come up, boom, boom. So you square up, boom, and you have this arc in the hip. Yeah, so can you see how I'm relaxing here? Relax, uh, point pushing into his hip here, so he can kind of come in and he comes up, boom. So he has this arc here. And then at the same time, keep going, I'm gonna get him to also push into there at the same time, yeah? Thank you, so hopefully that helps. You can see a little bit what you're trying to do, thank you. Yeah, cheers. So now we do the proper low stance where obviously you can stay high, 
So when we squat down to the floor. So you can stay high, use your legs. You can use the floor. You can put one foot here, one foot here, or anywhere on your leg. And the key bit is if you do squat low, you don't want this knee to collapse in. You want to open it up. You can see this hip relaxes down, just like I was doing to Ralph. And I turn my body. And I just pulse in the stretch. You can hold statically if you wish, or you can turn. And then up. Can you see I'm doing the same where I sink? Come to the other side. Remember, just go as far as you feel comfortable. And then change of a side. And change of a side. And straight up. Okay. And just shake out your legs just to relax because we've overdone it a little bit while I'm explaining. <clears throat> okay, so feet together, interlock your fingers, stretch up, palms facing up. So again, you want your palms facing up, not this way. So again, I see lots of people doing this. So it's not easy. You want it to face up. So first, just take a deep breath in. Keep your feet flat on the floor. We'll work through the different phases with this exercise as well. In, and then ah, relax, soften your knees. You don't need to go deep. You don't need to bend forward much, but you want to kind of like have an S shape in your body. Yeah, whether it's deeper or higher, a bit like a baby curled up. Yeah, so that's the idea of this movement. So you breathe in deep, in, ah. And really relax the arms. Again, ready, in. Ah. And this time you lift your heels up. So as you breathe in, lift the heels up, full stretch in, heels down as you breathe out and down in the same way. You can make a little tap to get the vibration in your body if you wish. So again, ready, in. Ah. And ready again. In. Ah. Okay, and this time we stretch up, feet flat first. Focus on your breath in and out through your nose. You want to empty your heels. So you can either do this by shifting your weight towards your toes. So you take the weight off your heels or you lift your heels up a little bit, not full stretch. So we say that you should be able to hold this for 10 minutes. So if you're up here, you may possibly not you hold it for 10 minutes. It's slightly lower where I'm at. You increase the chances of holding it for 10 minutes. And as you breathe out, Try to feel like you're breathing out through the soles of your feet. In, stretch up, down and out and relax and you relax your arms your legs shake out the side to side so you want that feeling of like letting go releasing through your arms and your legs and as you step side to side, feel your root, try to build, work 
on your root, ground yourself. So you kind of slightly relax into the step. So as well as the feeling of like letting go, releasing through your arms and your legs, you want to focus on that opening feeling in the joints. So remember that feeling of creating space in and around the shoulder joint between the actual bones and the tissues surrounding the joint. So we open through the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists and hands, so all the small joints in the hands and fingers. Same with your hips, knees, ankles and feet. And relax, good. 